Hi, I'm Aoife Casby, and this is an extract from Pilgrimage, or the liminal situation of a Connemara erratic. Didn't used to think much about smell until all I could think about was not smelling. Smell isn't something you usually consider in landscape. When they took Jesus from the tomb, was his body putrefying? Putrefaction is the fifth stage of death. Things I know now. Cadaverine and putrescine will remind you of rotting flesh. Can you remember when you last smelled that? Scattol, think nappies, the bathroom after a stranger, dogs, the stuff we do in private, odour of decay, waste from our guts. Indole has a mustier, mothball-like thing going on. Granny's wardrobe. Hydrogen sulphide is the smell of hell. Lewd, nasty eggs. Methanethiol will bring you to cold corridors in ill-heated blocks of flats. That leftover cling of boiled and rotten cabbage. The smell of hunger and dead novels. Dimethyl disulfide and trisulfide. Foul. Garlic that has sat in water and its own juice for too long. It hates itself. The plan was to head west towards the islands, the arse end of the Gaeltacht. Pete, Baggy, Alan, Brian, Mays, Anthony, Lucas, me, and the guy that we didn't know, who was a friend of Baggy's. That was the first surprise. Baggy shot out of his car, late, and I could feel the hackles rise, just a touch of what the fuck, when we saw the hulk of a man getting out of the passenger seat. seat. August. Hello, you fuckers. And from that initial meeting in the car park, it was an us and him. Or maybe us and them, he and Baggy. Don't be a pack of cunts, lads. The car takes nine, said Baggy, as soon as he registered the reaction. Just saying, man, you should have said, said Brian. Brian liked certainty. He'd be the type to dislike August on principle, but his reaction was infectious and we gave half-raised waves and curt nods instead of handshakes. I can't understand a word the fucker's saying, Lucas said, and clapped a hand across August's back. August turned quickly, and the movement seemed a little off, like he was going to lay him out. Ah, man, said Lucas. You have to listen to understand, said August, divining something. There was a strange comfort in the used cigarette smell of his breath, but it was hard to crawl into his sound, all front of the mouth, trippy oars, the trace of muddy snow off them, something unknowable. Baggy liked him, though. After years in London and Bahrain, Baggy'd come home, had met August through some site where the Eastern European electrician had been advertising his skills, made August chief electrician in his little company. August, six foot three, muscle bound, and he didn't blink. Really? Lads, August here is great crack, Baggy said, as if reading from his CV. This man could charm birds out of trees or the knickers off a nun. He is, me all muckers, great with the ladies. All right, Pete said, but Baggy cook cut him off with a loud and. The best part is, you won't believe, I mean you won't. And all the time, August was eyeing us, unflinching, unblinking. Credit it. He works as a clown in the fucking hospital. Can you believe that? Baggy said. And yes, we could. His new best friend was a clown.